Hello again and welcome to Manch Talk. I am Tammy Simmons Garthwaite. And I'm Carla Garrick. And Happy New Year to everybody. I hope everybody had a wonderful, um, I hope all our viewers had a wonderful Christmas and uh, New Year's and there we didn't have to dig out from four feet of snow like Buffalo, New York or anything like that. So... Yeah, Happy New Year. It's going to be awesome because you know why? It's 100% in your control. So I, I, I preface this when we're off air that I'm like, okay, so I brought death and despair um, because it is. Well, I brought smiles. And I, know, I, I did bring a couple of really happy things, but it was interesting. So what made me, I want to preface this. I was watching a video and I can't remember who it was. It doesn't matter. Um, and he was talking about millennials and how just different generational things and about how millennials were raised in a certain way and how the uh, data shows that so many millennials don't feel like they have any uh, lasting relationships or any purpose and like there's this very big disconnect and how that's a struggle for employers because uh, you know, they're having to deal with the way these children were raised into adults and then now they're just dysfunctional. But the one piece that stuck out in there was that kids were told they could ha they could be anything they want to be, which sounds very uplifting. You can do anything you want. And that does sound very uplifting, but then I'm like, but then the cold slap of reality hits you in the face because you can't be anything you want to be. I couldn't be a ballerina. You know, like I, I can't be a, you know, a world-class world, -class world uh, wrestler. Like you really can't be anything but you can strive to be all sorts of things, which leads me to my death and despair. So between while we were off for a week, I mean, how much could happen in Manchester in a week? Not much, right? Right? Okay. So I, I actually had to type this morning because I couldn't keep track of when things happen. So I just, before, well, while, while you're doing that, so I think the idea with the, you can be anything you can be is... It's about the mindfulness of setting goals that are achievable, right? I so, agree. So, so I mean, if you weigh six hundred pounds and you're like, I want to be a ballerina, right, that, that's going to be crazy. That's, that, that, that's actually like that sounds like you have a mental health right. issue exactly. you need to deal with. So, the be anything you can be is within the confines of who you are. I agree. That's what so, I'm saying. So, I think. So, that but that's important because the point is you're supposed to. Like people are supposed to feel empowered, right? Because the way we fix the world and heal people and, and make them care about their health again and all that mm -hmm. kind of stuff is to be like, you can actually set goals and do yes. achievable things. Yes. I lost 60 pounds. Yes. I quit drinking. I stopped biting my nails. Right. I did all of these things in the last five years that I thought were entirely unachievable. But then I set my mind to it. And so I want people back home to be like, if you set your mind to something, you can do it. And you know what? Maybe if you're a 600 pounds and you really set your mind to being a ballerina, you could probably do it. You're going to have to lose 500 of those 600 pounds. <laughs> but who knows? Maybe you just dance in your own little nutcracker at home that Christmas. Well, yes, definitely. Um and I, that's what I, so my, death and my brain, <laughs> no, but that's where my brain is too, is that like, yes, you can, you can strive to be, you know, you're a little kid and you want to be the president of the United States and that's okay. You should encourage, yes, anybody can be the president of the United States. However, if you're 35 and living in a tent and you can't figure out how to live in an indoor space, your realistic expectations should be a little more realistic about what you're going to achieve in the next year or so like your first goal should maybe to be living indoors that call me you know a skeptic but anyways i divert so these are the things that have happened between when we last taped i mean there was more than this but these are the highlights um on sun um on christmas morning the manchester police and and you know emt or whatever found um a woman dead in a tent outside families in tr transition homeless shelter on manchester on manchester street um they so also she, found a woman with a baby right well, they're getting this oh. in that second so that was they found her on christmas morning she actually died the night before so on christmas eve the 24th of december 34 year old amanda hartness was found dead she died in a tent on the street outside of the sh homeless shelter the weird, th these stories seem to have a whole lot of backstory. In November, 
Hartness was honored at the Carroll County Jail in a ceremony that included jail officials, county commissioners, and state senator Jeb Bradley. She had earned her high school equivalency, which included four college-level courses. She completed a supportive reentry program. I printed out, I had to print out an article because I wanted to highlight the things. She says, she planned to move to the Goffstown area when released. She hoped to study political science and theology, and she wanted to help others. I want to make a point and be living proof that it doesn't matter your circumstances, environment, or situation. You can always do whatever you want to do. Well, clearly she wanted to do drugs. Nine days after she was released, she was dead in a tent on the street in Manchester. I mean. Nine days. Nine days after being released as a model prisoner. So keep that in mind, because that, that really boggled, that didn't, that boggled my mind. Um, just as a little backstory. She had you can't dabble in alcohol and drugs. She, you got to decide and pull that plug, folks. Um, she often got in trouble for theft, even though small thefts were pro eventually prosecuted as felonies because of repeat crimes. She had been serving a two to five year sentence for stealing a pickup truck and barreling through route, a Route 101 highway construction zone in 2020. She had completed the Carroll County Jail's four month transitional reentry under supportive treatment or trust program. The intensive program focuses on staying sober, dealing with anger management issues, and developing co coping spills after release. Just hold that. All right. Because we, I know we're going to come back to this. So that's Christmas Day. The day, more, the Monday, that Monday, the day after Christmas, Alexandra Eckersley, 26, gave birth to a baby boy inside a tent, which was inside of another tent, and then calls 911 at some point to say, "There's a, I've had a baby in the field. Um, misleads the police for an hour, sends them in the wrong direction before I think an EMT person convinced her that she needed to say where the baby was. And she directed them to the tent inside the tent, which was across the trestle from the ice skating arena, just over the trestle into the Goffstown side. Um, she claimed she didn't know she was pregnant, but I did read accounts elsewhere where people said she had said she was pregnant, so that's not probably true. Um, the 46-year-old male that she shares that tent with doesn't seem to be anywhere to be found, which also is intriguing. Um, the backstory, Alexandra Eckersley is the adopted daughter of Hall of Fame Red Sox pitcher Dennis Eckersley, mm, I noticed who that, has yeah. since filed to obtain guardianship of the baby boy who is up in Lebanon and, you know, alive. Um, her parents explain that Ali suffers from bipolar and other mental health issues. She's been treated most of her life by various doctors and facilities and whatnot. Um, but once she turned 18, there was little they could do to keep her on her medications and on the right path. Um, she was a felon due to a previous con drug conviction. She was arraigned by phone from her hospital bed on felony second degree assault with extreme indifference and felony falsifying physical evidence, misdemeanor reckless conduct, misdemeanor endangering the welfare of a child. She pled not guilty. Um, she had been camping in the Concord area since about 2018 until a couple months ago. She had been re arrested repeatedly in Concord. Not long after moving out of her parents' home in Massachusetts, she has been arrested on drug possession, theft, failure to appear, resisting arrest, criminal trespass, disposal of human waste charges, and bench warrants. In November 2019, she was accused of possessing methamphetamine. She is a felon due to a controlled drug, controlled premises, um, where drugs were kept in conviction from 2021. Uh, she was fined and received a suspended sentence. Uh, a felony drug possession charge out of Webster from May 21 was dismissed in January of 22. And rest assured, just so you are worried about where Miss Eckersley is while her baby boy is, you know, living in a hospital in Lebanon, she was released on $3,000 cash bail a few days later. Fast forward to Thursday, December 29th at 1130 in the morning, a man was found de dead in a tent in a homeless camp located about 100 yards from the rail trail behind the DMV, just an eighth of a mile from where Daniel Whittemore, a Manchester resident who was walking on the rail trail, had been stabbed to death. The suspect, who was homeless, had moved to Manchester from Mississippi shortly before that. So that's before New Year's. Then we get to New Year's Eve. Um, 6.44 in the morning, uh, calls came in for a large fight with a stabbing in the street outside the homeless shelter. One person was seriously injured and from a reported stabbing. The fight continued with police and fire on the scene. Another call at 7.15 as another fight kicked off and there was a second person seated at the train and then 
at the scene and then transported to the hospital. They blocked off a two-block area with evidence tape. And from what I also read after that, we had to have um, hazmat company come in and clear because there was so much blood on the street in this two block area um the police did say they made several arrests also on new year's eve in the evening there were two calls to the homeless shelter a psychiatric outside and a cardiac cardiac arrest inside that was at about 6 15 in the afternoon on uh, 9 15 that night there was an unconscious person in a white sedan at the cvs on south willow street um, about quarter to 11, there was a report of a man in the middle of Elm Street in traffic that would not move, wearing jeans and a reflective coat. Um, earlier that day or the day before, I had read about a woman who had these reflective coats from some company that was no longer using them and was giving them out at the homeless shelter. Well, then he, that disrupted Elm Street. Um, we appreciate the traffic safety and if you think you were doing you know, Maybe it was just stuff. the holiday season. Let's, you know, happy new year and let's have a fresh new start. On um, January 1st at 6.31 in um, the evening, there was an overdose report in the lobby at 298 Hanover Street. Eight o'clock on the 1st, unconscious person outside of the Alltown Mobile on Brown Ave. Um, also on the, uh, now we're moving on to the second, there were two overdoses reported in a car at the CVS on Mammoth Road, 8.45 in the morning on the second, ALS responding to a person hunched over a fence at 178 West Mitchell Street, which is where the disc golf is, um, 10.30 in the morning, reported overdose in a car at Duncan's on South Willow Street, um, Coming up at 11 in the morning, reported overdose in a tent outside the shelter. 5.30 in the evening, reported overdose at the Even Hotel on South Willow Street um, in Manchester. So we seem to have a problem here in Manchester, if anybody hasn't figured well, this out I yet. And I don't know that anybody has actually got a plan to do anything about it. Well, I mean, I'll put you on the spot and be like, Tammy, what's the I don't solution? Know. So we don't know what but the solution is. But I'm not claiming is. to be in charge. But but fair enough. I mean, clearly they don't know either, right? Like and anyone don't. who's in charge doesn't know. They just hired a new uh, homeless person and for a, the other one who quit because... And a person for a drug overdose, overdose. specialist or so, something. So, so that person, if you actually go look <laughs> at the article, I was like, wow, this is a sentence of jargon from start to finish that says... Nothing. It was it was literal nonsense. I was like, "Wow, did uh, you know? Did the the AI Chat yep. GPT write this? Because it kind of sounded that way." And um, so, so I think the first thing we have to admit is there is a problem. I don't think it's just Manchester. It isn't, Look, but I've it is Boston, more predominant but, in Manchester and uh, compared well, to other places. In New Hampshire, where we live. Yes, because probably because, again, we've talked about this a lot. One of the things we can identify as a problem is if you subsidize these programs, mm -hmm. you're going to get more people who come here. But I think the deeper issue, the underlying issue, goes to what you started with, with the, the millennials and sort of this malaise, right? Mm -hmm. So first of all, can we just all stop with the climate scare that's so not nonsense, important. right? Because, in our world because today. I actually think it is damaging because people's people think, brains. So, so uh, an entire generation has been raised with information in a way that you and I yes. were not. So they were told. First of all, they went to schools that sort of believe in mind control, mm -hmm. in conditioning, in certain narratives, in certain stories, right? So there's no counter to it like i'm like where are the rebels like aren't kids supposed to get out of high school but they or, don't they don't and have be any like ah they don't seem to think feel as though there's a purpose there's no purpose the world's going to end in 10 12 15 but years but here's anyways. the point so when i in 1978 they said the world was going to end in 20 years we are in 2023 so every young person watching this the world's not going to end so let's start there <laughs> not, not anytime soon not anytime soon and if it is, it's probably going to be an asteroid. Or a nuclear war. Well, let's not go That's super doom and matter. gloom. Um, I don't think we would have a nuclear war. I don't think. War. I, I, think I have to believe too, that humanity is better than that. Like, I'm a hopeless, I, 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 sometimes I'm a hopeless optimist. I, I, you know, people aren't that idiotic or, or I so mean, my, Zelensky <laughs> would be. But so, so part of the malaise is, one, I actually think when the government lied about weed, they mm -hmm. created a massive knock-on problem. So D.A.R.E. and all those programs were like, if you smoke weed, you're going to like fry your brain and you're going to blah, right? And so then people started smoking pot and they were like, oh, that's not true. 
maybe I could try some yeah. heroin. Right. And then you're like, no, weed and heroin, although the federal government will say they're no. the same <laughs> thing and they're on the schedule together, right. are not the same no. thing. So I blame the government for the fentanyl mm -hmm. and opioid crisis. I also blame big pharma. And I think the real problem is that we have a massive, massive mental health decline because everyone is unhealthy. They're eating the wrong stuff. They're medicating with the wrong things. I think the things. medications are a big um, problem. Just today, I actually saw a tweet go by because I was banned for a week. Um, where someone, you know, there are all these tweets coming in out now where, you know, because people are waking up to the real story. And someone was like, why didn't the CDC one time say, hey, everyone should up their vitamin D and you need to get you some know, exercise we, we during never, COVID? We never promote not the good once, stuff. Not once did they promote anything that would actually make your health better. And that is the question you have to ask yourself. So if you're suffering, because, I mean, this makes me well, sad. It because does it's make suffering. me sad. It, it makes me sad that, you know, like... That's one girl's 24 years old. You know, like... Like, having a baby in a tent inside a tent is not... But, like, but, but, <laughs> like but, you're not living your best like life. Like we've always said, and you say all the time, people do have to... Be, it's hard to be... It's hard to want to help chain, people change if they're not willing to want to change themselves. In the case of the Eckersley girl, she has a very supportive family who, who has offered her to stay at home. She just has to get into some rehab program so that she can become unaddicted to drugs. And, she, and because she has mental issues, she can't either wrap her head around it or just doesn't want to. And that leads me to, well, like, so what is the solution? You, that, why are why are people who have made these decisions allowed to live to do things that you and I would not be allowed to? If you decided to set up a tent system in your backyard and let people stay there, the city would come and you would be fined and it would get shut down and you would get harassed by the government. But but other people can set up I mean, I drove by the shelter this morning. I drive by every time because I always want, you know, people go, why do you just drive by? And I'm like, because this is my money. This is our tax dollars. Are they, is it improving? Is there any, are we making any headway? It is disgusting over there. It is expanding. Every time I go by, it is bigger and bigger. And the city was there with a big claw truck, supposedly cleaning it up. I don't know what they cleaned up because the place is just, it looks like a landfill. Like, why can't we, if we were able to, do you remember when COVID started and Sununu lost his mind and he was like, we're going to spin up all these, um, these emergency centers yeah. and these tents with the cots, with the whatever, right? And they did it like in a week <clears throat> or two days right. or something. And then we never used them. We never needed them. There right. was no overflow of the hospitals. Right. All of it was a lie or misinformation right. or disinformation, whatever name you want to give it. The difference between miss and dis is misses oh, I didn't really know, so maybe they didn't know back then. Disinformation is when they're just literally lying to you. So if they could spin up those emergency services with cots and with everything within two days, why can't well, we I think do that at uh, at that Valley Strip, at that old gate jail? Well, because or... we don't own that property. Okay, but I mean, the city owns no, a lot of properties. No, I don't know, or someone have... donate. Uh, I, I use the, with, the, the Hannafords that they shut down I, on South Willow. I agree. Or I, some I th but that's what I, my point is. What exactly are we doing? I've, you, know, you hear that we're doing things. You hear the government. And I by the government, I mean the mayor and the alderman and the fire chief and the police. You hear everybody say, well, we're, you know, we're doing things and we're trying to identify. Well, again, well we, all I've been hearing. It's I, jargon. Again, that, that, what is that the article was literally like, we're going to munge the data to get the inputs, to get the right, information, like, to get the. But me, and I was like, but, but what I mean, mean, you're just, no, you're paying someone $150,000 well, to exactly. do nothing. And that's where my pr frustration comes because our tax dollars. We're being told that we're spending money. Like, there's no funding for this. We're not. Do but the state gave Manchester all sorts of money to go to help with these things. And I, as a taxpayer, would like someone from the city government to show me where we got money from, where we have spent money, and what we have achieved. Because if we have achieved nothing, we should not continue to spend the money. If we're not going to achieve anything, then just stop spending the money. Right? Yeah. 
Yeah. Don't spend hundreds or th- hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars. I mean, it's if we're not improving this situation. I actually think if if we and maybe this could be an ask to the aldermen and and to the mayor is we would like to see a breakdown on a budget where we can see what is being spent Literally. on homeless, like like a one, one like a one page P&L. spreadsheet, right? Yeah, that we that that basically is just right. like okay, we're paying for this that we paid for this homeless director that was what was it a hundred thousand yeah. right. dollars she quit so now we're not paying that. Um, right. Now we hired this other guy with a new title so that you don't really notice that we failed with this first thing. Oh no, they, this got, is they gonna... have both positions filled, so there's like three hundred thousand oh, okay. dollars so being right spent there. with what. What are we achieving? So, so you know, and 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 then again, I think we talked about this last time. The number that the city is telling us is that there were 138 unhoused right. people uh, was w- during their last survey. I think that number is not right, but but let's. So I was like, okay, so 140 people. You could interview all of them within two weeks, right? Uh, that those two paid positions can sit down, you can interview them, and then you could do it in a week. And then Even you've if got a month, we would accomplish these, something. Uh, because, again, it's when we talk about these problems in a nebulous, like, in this, this like, the homeless. It's, it's like, no, it's, there's a dude down there right. who sits down there every Tuesday yeah. when I show up. There's Mr. with his gray beard and his cup. Yeah. And so it's like... That's the his deal. person. Right. What's, What's his, his story? Deal? Fix him. Right. Don't tell and, us And, and these... say we started the year with 140 unhoused people, and three months in, we we can report that we are at 130. 100. And at least we can say, well, okay, we did. We got 10%. Oh, okay. Yeah. I think it's still too much money for that amount of people, but... If you can show me, th- but I don't believe there's, I don't believe that, I don't believe our government looks at things the way a well, business they would don't, look at but it. But they also don't look at it, be- uh, they don't look at it the right way because they're looking at it like socialists. Right. Because a socialist looks at a problem as the homeless. We must solve the homeless problem, right? So now it's just this big thing. But. But individualists Break look it down at things into... at like, there's a guy with a long beard and a cup down here. Right. He's a person. He is homeless. Figure out him. Well, like, it, like, it's not it's insurmountable. It's funny because Dan will always say, and I agree with him, Dan always, the, the, the buzzword that makes him crazy is this home, uh, housing first initiative. And I'm like, what does that mean? And they, I know the argument. The argument is people aren't successful with drug rehab. People aren't successful getting a job and all these things unless they have a place to live, which is I don't disagree with. However, the solution can't just be handed to them. In the article, because Eckersley was interviewed years ago living up in Concord, and I just was like, oh my God, she would like to be a leader. She wants to put her life experience to work. First, though, she must manage her bipolar disorder and depression and anxiety and get them under control. I want to begin a homeless mental health awareness event. Okay. And then I'm like, what? Have it be like the telethon or a carnival where you pay to get in or a movie night and the money goes to a housing shelter. And I was already going like, see, you're doing look, well, look, Wait, listen to this. This is the part. The that- problem isn't that there's not enough money. There's I money. Don't We're not that. doing something. I mean, I actually think we could probably cut. I mean, let's not do it because they'll just spend it right. on drugs. But you could probably cut every one of these people like $30,000. And, and call it done. And- so she, this is what the, uh, a mentality, because I think this is a, a thing people struggle with is you have to remember you're putting yourself in, you have to put somebody in their mindset. She has ideas, goals, vision. She wants to go to college and join the medical field. And I'm like, okay, you have to go control your bipolar. (laughs) She wants to be innovative, saying the homeless can do landscaping at a special facility just for them. Maybe paint walls, not pay rent. Maybe learn to garden. Maybe use funds to buy an abandoned building. And I'm like, okay, those are all wonderful, touchy-feely things, but who's paying for that? Because that's not realistic. Anyways, we have five minutes, so I didn't want to be all despair, doom and gloom. There are a couple, Woo! two positives that I wanted to talk about in case you missed. Um, the first thing is McIntyre Ski Area is open. Um, they have skiing and tubing daily. I think they are closed today, probably because it's raining and, you know, 
It's supposed to be a little ice rain out there. Yeah. So be careful. Um, I mean, for places like McIntyre, it's a struggle because it really hasn't been cold enough to even no. make snow. But uh, they are open. You can go to McIntyre Ski Area. That's M C I. N T Y R E ski area.com to get more information about tubing and stuff because knock on wood, even though I'm thrilled that we don't have snow on the ground, I'm confident it is coming this winter. Um, so that is one thing. Uh, the second thing is, um, in case you missed it, the Dairy Queen on Second Street earned the number one sales award for 2022 out of 4,353 Dairy Queens across the country, which I was like, that's a thing. Who knew? So we put the Dairy Queen in Queen City. That's right. Um, they apparently were number two last year. And then we're in a tight race with great, the Great Georgia location. Um, this I did not know. Did not surprise me, though. Manchester had already clinched the number one spot for total ice cream sales in 2022. Because whether you realize it or not, if you aren't from someplace else in this country... We eat more ice, ice cream, cream in than New Hampshire than any place else in the country. I mean, honestly, so is, it, we're it's, also we. I, I also believe we drink more iced coffee than any place else in the country. So it's it boggles the minds of people in hot places that we're the ones drinking the iced coffee and eating the ice cream. Um, so, anyways, I wanted to say congratulations to the Dion family and good job. And I'm glad to see that they are as successful as they are. And since we are going to run out of time, and I took all, you'll have to bring that next week. Um, I do <laughs> next have a week. Quick it's picture. old news again. Um, I gave Kyle a picture to post. Um, um, I was in Market Basket the other day, and for those of you who think that maybe inflation is improving, you're not reading that wrong. 18 eggs were $8.19. Now, granted, there were other eggs there that were less expensive, but how is 18 eggs $8.19 at Market Basket? And anybody who can, with a straight face, say... Well, inflation's under control and everything's getting better. They're lying to you. They are just lying, um, which seems to be the way things are these days. So. Yeah, you know, I think uh, I, I was watching some stupid show. I, I don't even remember what it was, but the in the quote, and it really struck me where the, the character said, well, you know, throughout history, they murder the truth tellers. Yep. And I thought, oh, that really hit me right? because, um, you know, I think the world can do with a little more truth. I think part of the reason people suffer from so much mental health issues is that we have this deep cognitive dissonance. We're being told one story. We're experiencing something else. Um, our thoughts and our own actions aren't always aligned. And um, and so, you know, my mission in life is is let's see if we can align those things. The more your thoughts and your actions are aligned, the happier be you become because you trust yourself, you believe in yourself. So I'll leave you guys with, I noticed there is a dry January article. Uh, if anyone is doing a dry January or maybe your New Year's resolution is, hey, I want to quit drinking. I am doing a lot of work on that right now. You can go to my website, carlagarrick.com. There are a lot of uh, seven reasons why to quit. There's uh, my own experience with drinking. Someone I admire actually read one of the articles and invited me to do a podcast yep. that'll be coming out tomorrow on the Tom Woods show. So uh, if you're watching this show right now and you want some support and help and, uh, and just, you know, someone to hold your hand or to tell you you can do it, uh, let us know in the comments on Facebook and we will hold, or at least I will hold your hand. That's all we got. That's all um, we got. No snow coming up for the next 10 days. Maybe some flurries or snow showers, but no significant accumulation. Um, be it careful. makes my one yeah. egg uh, chickens happy. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but do be careful out there because when the temperature goes up and down and it is wet, there tends to be ice and accidents, and apparently people no longer know how to drive. Um, we'll be back next Tuesday with another wonderful audition. No more doom and gloom. <laughs> Try all not happy, to do all happy. doom and gloom. <laughs> um, if you have any suggestions, email us at manchtalk at gmail.com. Otherwise, we'll be back next week. Take care. Bye.